getting started. There is another pump that runs, keeps the pressure up once we're working. So switch on the ignition. And then a little tiny blowtorch. Just what I've got to do is just heat up the uh, fuel jet just a little bit. Just takes about a minute. Okay, we've just got ignition. I don't know if you heard that. It's a little tiny pop as the burner ignites. Just keep a bit more heat going just for a moment. There we go. <coughs> so the burner's lit now, so I've got about three minutes or so to wait until, uh, until we've got steam. I'm just going to run the engine. Get it propped up just to. Uh... It's just warming the engine up to get steam to it. Okay, I'm just going to shut the drains now. I'll have a dip it more. There we are. We're just on the edge of Devonshire Tunnel, which had a, a gradient of 1 in 50, and uh, no steam machine has been through there since March 1966. Okay, so well, today's the day. Let's hope we make it through then. See it, <laughs> see it going through. So, before we have a chat about the uh, the bike, tell me, because I know you're really a high tech man in your well, uh, in that's your right. I've done a life. fair bit of robotics, that sort of thing. But actually, my, my my real interest is in mechanical engineering. So I've always had an interest in steam, and actually, right. I come from a family where we've had an interest in steam as well. My father has a steamboat, and uh, I've always had steam models as a child, and then moved into building my own model steam railway locomotives, three and a half and five inch gauge. And, uh, and I now am lucky enough to have two full-size Stanley steam cars, 1921 yeah. and 1922. Yeah, I've seen them. So I've seen them. Uh, that's, you know, that sort of shows where I am with steam. Yeah. And um, uh, I've always fancied putting steam on a bicycle because I know it's technically challenging. I mean, anyone could put a steam engine on a bicycle, but will it be useful? So, mm. so for me, it was about trying to design a steam bicycle that was useful. And about three years ago, a friend of mine turned up at my house with an electric bike and I had to go on it and I was so impressed I nearly bought one <laughs> but thankfully I stopped myself and decided well it'd be much more fun to build a steam one and fulfill that that idea so I was lucky enough to be given this this bicycle just the raw basic bike it was rusted up right. and wouldn't work mm -hmm. but um, but I was given it and um, so it seemed like a perfect so, donor. So what you've done you've actually not because there are a few uh, steam bicycles around but that's right. a bit of a lash yep. up yep. <laughs> you're quite, There's all quite honest when you yeah, see yeah, them yeah. so but you you've you've gone for a sort of some state-of-the-art technology here. Well I have you? a bit and the other thing also is I've used CAD extensively so I've used computers um, I've used um, Excel in particular to to model the whole steam system thermodynamically. Right. So I did that before I cut any metal to make sure it would actually work. Yeah. And I thought that was a really good, important uh, yeah. way. So, so, so everything's balanced with, with, with each other. Absolutely, the all the systems match the each other. Yeah. And the, um, so the, the actual uh, design work I did on CAD as well, because it's a very compromised design that everything just fits. Mm. The whole idea is to make it, everything just fit, mm. but make the bicycle still rideable. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't want it to be big and no, no. cumbersome. That's what's nice about it. So, yeah. can you just talk us through? I mean, what's it run on for a start? Okay. Well, we have here a petrol tank. Mm -hmm. So, we're running on any vaporizing oil, but I'm using petrol today as it's most convenient. Water tank. So, the petrol gives me a range of about 27 miles. The water tank gives me a range of about 16 miles. Mm -hmm. Then, we've got the steam generator. I don't like to call it a boiler because it's a bit more involved than that. It's a hybrid uh -huh. boiler. So, it's part monotube steam generator and part fire tube boiler. I can raise steam from cold in about four and a half minutes. Right. 
but of course you can always pedal off straight pressure? away. I'm running at 125 psi, okay. but the automatics hold it back to about 115. Mm -hmm. something like that. And you're superheating it? I'm superheating heavily. In fact, that's the secret of this steam bike: is right. that the uh, at 125 psi, you would get it would work, but it would be very lacklustre. Hmm. I'm adding a, a further 300 degrees centigrade to the steam wow. as it comes out of the boiler, so it's hugely heavily superheated. And that's and what gives it this dry. bright performance. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. but I'm using modern synthetic oils. And that's the, that's the art of it, yeah. really. It, mineral oils wouldn't survive those temperatures. Yeah, no, no, no. There was, was, in the early days of steam locos, that's why they had very low superheat, because the oils, the couldn't, oils couldn't, couldn't, couldn't manage it. No. Yeah. So we've got petrol. So petrol. And it's under pressure. Yeah. And, it's, and there's a vaporizer. It's a vaporizer, and so there's a nozzle there. Yeah. There's a, so there's in fact, a big there flame. is the fuel, the fuel jet uh -huh. itself. So there's a big flame going in there. And it goes round the tube. The, uh, yeah, and that coil, coil tubes. Single coil. Yeah. Well, there are, there are multiple <coughs> sous vide coils, mm -hmm. and then a, a 107 fire tube boiler. So there's right. 107 on fire tubes in there, which okay. is a sort of a wedge about right. the edge. And then a further three coils at the top. So we've got the steam up there now, and then we need to let it out, and the engine's here, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So okay. this is, it's a it's a very conventional single cylinder slide valve engine, mm -hmm. and what I've done is I've set it um, so it's about. 45% cut off. Now, uh -huh. to the technical people, that means that I'm getting expansive work from the steam. The yeah, piston so moves past its way. 100% of the stroke, but only 45% of that stroke. The steam, steam goes in, it's cut yeah. off, and then the expansion does the does rest. The rest. That's and right. that works a small crank yeah. here. That's right there. And then you've got a gear drive, you've got it geared down. Yeah. So I'm using modern toothed um, pulley, uh, mm -hmm. tooth belts on tooth um, pulleys here. Yeah. Uh, which is really quite a good way of transmitting high torque. Mm. And actually, the torque is so high, I have stripped a few teeth yeah. off that yeah. belt in the past. Yeah, well, Harley Davidson's have had uh, belt drives for oh, 20 yeah. years. Yeah, 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 it does work. It does work. So, so we've got steam coming in here through a throttle. Yep, which Presumably is that's up to the handlebars yep. somewhere. On, okay. Using a Villiers magneto lever right. <laughs> as a throttle. Excellent. So that comes in there and then the exhaust is down here. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's, at the moment I'm exhausting to atmosphere. Mm -hmm. My plan is to build a condenser which fits along the front mm -hmm. of the frame here. So you can reuse the water. So I can water. reuse the water and that'll push my water range up to about 40 miles. That's yeah what I'm hoping. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's quite complicated to add a condenser. It is, it? yeah, but I've done it before, so I think right. I can okay. get away with it. Fair enough. So, so tell me about this, this okay. little bit here then. So there's some sort of very small engineering going on here. We have a what's called an eccentric drive here, which mm -hmm. is a, t a kind of crank. Yeah. And it so drives... It's like a plunger. It's like a plunger. Yeah. And it drives these two pumps. So there are mm -hmm. two pumps here. There's an air pump. Mm -hmm. That's this one here. Mm -hmm. This one delivers compressed air to the fuel system right. and maintains the pressure at about, 20, uh, about 30 to, to, psi. To push the fuel into, push the, the, burner. Fuel into the burner. Uh -huh. The other pump mm -hmm. is a variable delivery water pump uh -huh. and that forces water into the boiler at just the right rate to uh -huh. keep up with And you've got a means of knowing how much water is in there? Uh, yep, so we have a water here. gauge here uh -huh. and a little mirror so as I can actually yeah. see it when I'm yeah. riding. Yeah. And that's about right, isn't it? Yes, imagine. that's right. So it's just, yeah. just above the top of the uh, yeah. fire tube. Yeah, presumably. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, quite a mm -hmm. way. But. but, I mean, people think, oh, it's going to blow up, it's a steam engine. Yeah. So what stops it blowing up? OK, well, the, the design of the boiler, it uses the fire tubes extensively to keep the rigidity of the boiler. And mm -hmm. now Stanley's have been doing this for over 100 years, mm -hmm. and no one's ever blown up a Stanley boiler, except Stanley's themselves, when they only they, did they that to find out. Pressure, they're running at about 500, 550 psi. Yeah. But the whole point is that the boiler's design is such that it's nearly all metal. So it's, it's, it's hugely heavily built. Um, all the materials are about two and a half times thicker than they need to be. So it's, uh, it's well within. Mm -hmm. In fact, this boiler, my boiler inspector that tests the cars has inspected this boiler and it now has a PSSR 2000 regulation certificate. So wow. it is, it is okay. fully certificated yeah, yeah. to industrial standards, right. this boiler. Okay. But you, would have a, you have a safety valve? There is a safety right? valve and there it is. It's just tucked away there. It's mm -hmm. a little unit that the back of the throttle is quite difficult to see. But it, it doesn't do any work oh, because the, there's an automatic system that holds the pressure back. Yeah. So the way it works is that as the pressure rises, this automatic system shuts the fuel off and being a vaporizing mm. burner you can take the heat away instantly yeah. so the safety valve never really does yeah, any no. work not no, like no. on a traction like engine fired, mm. you know, I, I drive steam engines and but if you've got a problem you know you've got 42 foot of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fire to that's, do, that's something right. yeah, with, do something with and that can be a problem whereas i don't so have you that can shut i can turn down, the fire off down instantly yeah. yeah but the automatics deal with it anyway and yeah, i have yeah. a manual control if i mm -hmm. need mm. well. and it's all working well 
at the yeah, moment. We shall see it going. And we'll in a see minute. it going soon. We will. Yeah. Do you intend? To, uh, you, you said of putting a condenser there so you can reuse the mm. water to extend the range. Um, having made it for a, a little while now, and you know, had a shakedown cruises, mm. is there anything else that you would change on it now? Um, yes, there is one thing I'm going to do at the moment. The exhaust steam is just wasted to atmosphere. It has quite a lot of heat in it. Mm. And so what I wanted to do is to make a, what they call a, um, a, a feed water heater. Mm. So this is another yeah, heat exchanger. So, the condenser. so, no, so we'll, no, take, the, yeah, yeah. we'll take the exhaust steam out. It can fit in this little yes. space here. Right. The water feed going to the boiler, that's this pipe here, mm. can go in there and it can take some of the heat from the exhaust and then inject it to the boiler. Yeah, course, yeah. That'll probably give me about 5% more fuel range. Yeah. Not a lot, but it'll mm. help. Mm. So that's one change, but otherwise I'm not going to change anything. It runs so beautifully as it is. Yeah, no, no, it just looks magnificent. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun to get to this point. Yeah, I'm sure, it's been a lot of yeah. hard work. A lot of, uh, well, a few, few tears, <laughs> a few interesting <laughs> moments. Um, certainly in the early days, uh, you can see down on the drive, there is actually another pulley drive down here. Yes. So in the early days, I had it running on a ratio of three to one reduction. And I found it worked very well, but in fact it went too fast. It would do 30 miles an hour quite, right, quite so comfortably, <laughs> but it wouldn't climb a hill at all. No. So, so I've reduced, reduced the ratio by putting this extra ring gear on the outside. It could still do with an even lower ratio, but I haven't got enough room to fit it in. So if I build another one, I will right. change that. So what's the power output of this? It, at the moment it produces about 130 watts. I designed it to produce 180 watts, and I think if you push it right to the limit, it would. Mm -hmm. But 130 watts will give you 15 miles an hour mm. nicely, so mm. it's actually quite a nice power. Mm. Um, and it helps nicely on hills. You still have to pedal on a hill, but mm. it's like cycling along the level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think it's absolutely magnificent. I can't wait to see it go through the tunnels. Okay, well, we'll have some fun with it. Let's do that. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> okay, cheerio. Oh, you should get that. <laughs> you got to get that. <laughs> I thought you'd like that bit, Leon. <laughs>